Froggo Hop Across the Seasons is a cute platform again for Pico 8. It's got nothing to do with Frogger. Welcome to Pico Playtime, the video series where I play through some cool Pico 8 games to show two lovely people. Today's game is called Pico Frogo Hop Across the Seasons, version 1.1, by The Smelly Frog, also known on Twitter as Da Smelly Frog. Um, this is Da Smelly Frog's first Pico 8 game, but it's not their first game. They have got a whole bunch of games on their itch page, all frog related. Very cute, very fun. Anyway, this is our first Pico 8 game, and oh, it's a, it's a, it's a little doozy. It's a, it's a good one. This, as you may suspect, <laughs> I tend to try and play good games on the channel if I can. Um, anyway, let's get the game loaded up, and I'll tell you all about it. Um, so bask in the glory of the title screen. Froggo, hop across the seasons. We are a Froggo. Let's just start the game. We can be talking about the game as we play it. Start of spring, frisky flowery field. Um, yeah, we are a frog and each level is seasonal. So we are currently in one of the spring levels. Each season has two levels. And um, yeah, we are hopping through the seasons. So the each um, level has its own distinct look. Let's talk about the gameplay. Um, there's some really nice level design in this in this game. Um, you can see some of it demonstrated now. We've got some items that we can pick up with our our stretchy frog tongue. One of the interesting kind of technical things about the game is that it uses um, to make the levels nice and big. It reuses level layouts, so you've got a kind of modular system for the levels. As you play through the game, you will start to recognise some repeated level layout sections. However, oops, <laughs> however, um, the layouts, whilst the layouts are the same, the items and the enemy placements in each level are different, so the, the levels never kind of feel repetitive. It's a really, really elegant way of making some nice big um, platformer levels in a Pico 8 game. This is all in one cartridge as well, it's worth pointing out. Um, I've played um, I've played multi-cart games that don't feel as big as this game does. Um, it's quite a long game by P2A at platform standards. Um, you can play through it in about 20 minutes, I suppose. I'm probably not going to be able to play through all of it. Um, I'll leave the rest of it up to you. Um, when you complete the level, or when you complete the game rather, um, you get a whoops. You get a cheat code, and I had a very quick peek in the cartridge, and there are several cheat codes. I'm not entirely sure how you unlock them. I'm wondering if you get um, just a, a different cheat level cheat code each time you complete the game. I am. Um, I got spring mode. I'm not entirely sure what that cheat code does, but yeah, a little bit of replay value there, trying to unlock all the cheat codes to find out what they all do. These um, interior levels, really nice looking. And look at this, you complete the level, you get a little jingle, and look, little cute frog smiles. Oh, it's so, the graphics in this game are so nice. Um, it's, um, it's got very big sprites for a Pico 8 game. These are 16 by 16 sprites. Um, gives the game a very kind of square, blocky look, very distinctive. These sprites have a very NES feel to them. Um, I really like the way that the Snowy Frog has used purple to stand in for black. Gives gives the game a kind of Super Mario Bros. 3 look. Very cool. Um, other than that, kind of graphics and gameplay wise, it kind of reminds me of the Mickey Mouse games on the Mega Drive or the Genesis. World of Illusion and Castle of Illusion. The kind of cutesy big cartoony sprites, the um, completely chilled gameplay, yeah, very Mickey Mouse, and don't forget those Mickey Mouse games were really good games, <laughs> don't let the fact that these Mickey Mouse fool you, they are worth worth a look, just like Froggo is, um, you can play the game on, um, I found a little trick here, just watch this, watch. 
we can safely get underneath the spiky shell guy. Um, yeah, you can play this game over on Itch. That's the link that I put in the description. I'm playing it on Splore as usual. Oh, that was silly, wasn't it? Really nice little transition there when you um when you die or when you um end the level. I think it does the same thing. I don't need the apple. I need to save the apple. Oh, there is a way to do that without getting hit. You just need better timing than that. Anyway, let's use my trick. Oh, it carried... It carried the enemy then. Interesting. Oops, that was silly. Yeah, you cannot use your um, stretchy frog tongue on the spiky shell enemies. Bear that in mind. Am I supposed to use the trick here as well? Is that going to do it? No. Oops. Well, no. <laughs> you see, I told you it was possible. Although, I have only got one hit point left now. There's a very nice difficulty curve in this game. Um, the first few levels are quite easy, quite forgiving. The fact that you've got two hit points um, makes this game, it gives the game a very nice, kind of easy cozy feel to it. I am sick of one hit and you're dead platform games. It's nice to have some hit points. Just two hit points, that's all it needs. You've got anything that continues, but because you don't you're not constantly being wiped out by the enemies, um, it doesn't become grating getting through the game. I appreciate that. We're in summer now. Um, oh, yes. You see, this is what I was going to say. Each level or the levels are kind of built up from kind of um, repeated kind of modular layouts but things are kept fresh with the addition of new enemies and platforms and things like these rather charming seagulls so yeah that keeps things fresh it keeps the game from not feeling like it's just recycling the same um, the same content if you like it's also nice as well to have something in a game I was, um, when I first played the game, my first playthrough, I was terrified of touching these seagulls because I thought, they'll almost certainly hurt you. They don't. The seagulls are friendly. They're trying to help us. Um, the bugs, on the other hand, they do want to hurt us. I do love the little jingle at the end. Oh, so cute. <laughs> Start of autumn, here we go. So, yeah, I don't want to have to grind all the way through the game. You need to play this game. It is such a nice platforming game. Um, really nice to see a platforming game on Pico that uses such big sprites. Um, oh, I love this. Is where the Mickey Mouse thing comes in. The Mickey, one of the Mickey Mouse games definitely had leaves like that that you could jump on. I'm sure of it. I like the bits where you have to kind of carry the. Um, it's an acorn as well, isn't it? I like the bits where you have to kind of carry the item through to the next area. Like what you're supposed to do here is um, ride. Let's get him. Ride this down. Oh, don't do that. Don't do that. You're supposed to bring that acorn through the level with you. Obviously, you want to do it a little bit better than I'm doing. Like, no, it is possible to do it. Believe me. I really like the difficulty curve in this game, it's like, I'm getting further into the game and it's starting to get a little harder. I'm not just hitting a brick wall right at the beginning, oh my god, oh my god. Right, I'm, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna finish this off in my own time, because now is the time when you need to be, um, playing this game. Go and check it out over on Itch all on Splore. Go and give Smelly Frog a follow over on Twitter and check out their other frog related games on Itch. I'm sure they're all very good. This one's certainly very good. Um, a really nice Pico 8 platformer with a real different feel to it. Very refreshing. Oh, it's good, isn't it? Anyway, that's enough of me rambling on. Go and check out this really great platform game on Pico 8 now. Thank you very much for watching this video. And I'll see you again very soon. Froggo! <laughs> Froggo!